Hey guys, Abel here back with another video. Today it's a bit of a rant and uh, I got so passionate about it that I decided to even put on my Yanis Antetokounmpo jersey. I even thought of checking in by saying, hey guys, Yanis Antetokounmpo here. But I just did it in a Hungarian video the other day, so it would have been a bit cringe if someone notices that. So basically what is happening, I was working on a video which would have been about auto-regulated eating, intuitive eating, and it would have been called 10 signs that you should try intuitive eating or you should try abandoning macro tracking. But I actually got a voice note from an ex-client of mine. And that voice note was about something that I actually feel pretty strongly about. And that is the idea that if you are not gaining strength on a cut, but you're just maintaining your strength, then that is actually not an indication that you're maintaining your muscle mass, but that is a good indication that you're most probably losing muscle mass. And the purported reason for that is that gaining strength is basically a function of two things. One is your morphological adaptations, i.e. gaining muscle. And the other thing is neurological adaptations, basically your nervous system and your brain basically becoming better at the skill of lifting weights. And that is a big component of gaining strength. So basically the skill of lifting weights and lifting heavier and heavier weights over time, that is a skill just like learning to play the guitar is a skill. So because of these neurological as well as those morphological adaptations, you are getting stronger over time. Now, when you're cutting, you're still getting those neurological adaptations, like you're still going through that brain training, the skill training from lifting weights, that doesn't stop just because you're cutting. So if you're not gaining strength, despite that, that means that there is a counter force that is canceling out those neurological adaptations, and is making you just maintaining your strength levels and not increase them. So what could that counter force be? Well, it's probably that those morphological adaptations, the gaining muscle component is actually pulling you in the other direction, which would mean that you're actually losing muscle. So yeah, like losing muscle, so negative effects there, gaining some neurological adaptations, positive force there. So basically the net result is, is that you're just standing still and you're just maintaining your muscle mass. Is that true? Yes or no? Well, Yanis actually had a press conference where he said yes or no in a way that actually had a big influence on me and that is part of the reason why I have this journey on. So I'm tempted to just go with this yes or no question. But the thing is that if I'm giving an answer to a yes or no question in this case, then it will only lead to misleading conclusions from your end. And so there is no answer here that is going to fit into yes or no. It's a bit more complex than that. And the reason I feel strongly about this is because the person who made this claim that if you're not gaining strength on a cut, then that means that you're losing muscle should know this. In fact, I know that he knows this. And to be honest, I'm a bit upset by this. Like this is purposefully fear-mongering, clickbaity, sensationalist stuff. And I have a pretty easy time forgiving for that if I see that the person has always been about that. When there is someone who from the get-go only posted this sort of stuff, then yeah, whatever. I mean, this is basically just a car salesman who got into fitness. But when there is someone who does have the knowledge and for the most part even does have the integrity, and then I see them doing this kind of stuff, that, that's always a bit more sad. That's a little bit like, I don't know, Frodo not wanting to throw the ring into the fire. It's like the dark side is calling you and it seems like now you're giving in. And that's always a bit disheartening to see. But anyway, this video will not be about this, but it will be about the concept itself. So hopefully by the end of it, those of you who are shitting yourselves because, oh my God, if I'm not gaining strength on a cut, then I'm losing all my muscle, will be a bit more chill and you can move on with your life. Another very brief addendum for the beginning. If uh, the video seems a little bit less than perfectly coherent at times, then please forgive me. I prepared absolutely nothing for this video. This is a very spontaneous idea. Uh, like half an hour ago, I did not know that I'm gonna be making a video about this today. So just for context. So the first thing I will say is that just logically speaking, if there are these two forces that can act on your ability to gain strength, which is morphology, so your muscle mass, and the other one is neurology, so basically your brain being good at the scale of lifting weights, why is it such a given that if one of them is going up, which is neurology, and despite that, the end outcome, which is your strength gains, are not improving, then that has to mean that the other force is going downwards, so you're losing muscle. Here's an easy analogy, maybe not the perfect one, but it will do the job. Let's say you're the owner of a corner shop, and the profits of that corner shop are hinging on two things. 
One is that you always have fresh supplies. So basically you have stuff to actually sell. And the other thing is that your assistant who is working there at the store and is doing your bookkeeping and also handling all the sales is doing his job properly. Now, if at the end of the month, your balance is zero, so you didn't make profits, you also didn't come out of it at a loss, so you're at zero, does that then mean that your assistant had to have stolen money from you? Because you had stuff to sell, so the supplies were coming in, yet you're at zero at the end of the month, so something else had to go down, so that means that your assistant has stolen money from you. Well, it might be the case, but before you actually go ahead and fire your assistant or you call the police on him, probably you will want to check your bookkeeping, right? Because if you see that, yeah, I sold 10 products this month and the price of each product was a thousand euros, then yeah, if the products actually cost me only a hundred euros, then yeah, that should actually be some pretty solid profit by the end of the month. So how the hell did it come out at zero? There might be a problem. I need to confront my assistant. Like what the hell happened here? But if you see that, okay, we sold 10 products, the price of each product was a thousand euros, but I also bought them for a thousand euros each, then well, yeah, it makes sense that we came out at zero. The problem is not with my assistant. The problem is with my pricing. Similarly here, okay, if I didn't gain strength, yet I'm assuming that I'm still making neurological adaptations continually. Okay, at the face of it, that's not a very good sign, but at the same time, just how much neurological adaptations am I expected to gain at this point? There are ways to answer that. For example, we can ask questions of ourselves. For how long have I been doing this exercise? If I've been doing it for a month, then yeah, like there are still probably quite a few neurological adaptations that I should be making to that exercise. How technically difficult is that exercise? If it's one of those machines which has an extremely fixed movement pattern or plane of movement, so really I can press in one direction and that's it, there's just no way to mess that up, then I would expect, for example, those neurological adaptations to aid me for not as long as in the case of a much more technical exercise. For example, if you're just learning to front squat or to back squat, then yeah, like that's a much more technical lift. You will be making neurological adaptations and the contribution of those neurological adaptations is going to aid your strength gains for much, much longer. I mean, hell, if you're new to these types of movements like a squat, then how you're squatting and how you're executing that lift from a technical aspect is probably going to be different after a year and a half compared to just a year or even two years compared to a year and a half. I mean, there is a huge, huge learning curve and you know, like there are multiple stages. First, you become competent enough at a back squat, for example, then you become good at it, then you become a master of the squat and even then you're perfecting it further. Another thing to take into account is how difficult has it been for you to progress a given lift or a given muscle group, even when everything was going perfectly right? So there will be areas of your body, so certain muscle groups and especially certain lifts that will be just really stubborn for some people. So even when you're bulking, even when you're eating big, training big and recovering big, even then, I mean, some lifts will just progress very, very slowly. The dumbbell overhead press, for example, is a classic example. People often have a very, very hard time progressing with that after just a couple of weeks. So let's say you've been doing the dumbbell overhead press for a year, which, you know, a year is a decent amount of time, but it's certainly not long enough to where you would expect barely any neurological adaptations at this point. So after a year, it's not uncommon at all for someone to only be able to progress their shoulder press like every two or three weeks. So if that's the case when you're bulking, then are we really going to say that if that lift is only maintaining itself during a cut, then that means that you're losing muscle? Of course not. Of course that's ridiculous. And actually here I've been using muscle groups and lifts kind of very generously interchangeably, whereas they are not interchangeable at all, because one of the primary things that you should be doing when you're assessing whether you're actually plateaued or whether there is actually something that should be tweaked in your program because things are not progressing is what is not progressing. Is it just one lift? Because if it's just the dumbbell shoulder press, then that's one thing, okay? It, we can conclude certain things from it, certain other things we can definitely not conclude from it. If it's the shoulder press with the dumbbell, but also the shoulder press with the barbell, and also the lateral raise with the dumbbell, and also the lateral raise with the cable, that will once again mean something entirely different. Now we are actually talking about the side delts and the front delts in general and how we should program for those because 
clearly progress is just not really happening on these lifts. Okay, change the camera angle a little bit. I needed to free up some space on the camera, but... So I believe I ended up talking about shoulder exercises and what if it's not just the shoulder press that is stagnating, but all of them on the whole. Is that an indication that you're losing muscle? Well, first of all, how difficult was it to progress on them when you were bulking or you were not cutting? If very difficult, then it sort of doesn't mean anything. It just means that something that was very hard to do, even when everything was going right, then now is going even worse when things are not optimal around you, which sort of doesn't really mean anything. But secondly, what about other muscle groups? So, okay, your shoulder exercises are stagnating. Is everything else going perfectly right? Is just that you're gradually chipping away at those muscle fibers at your delts and that is preventing you from gaining strength? Um, I, I guess it might be. However, how do these plateaus happen? You know, gaining muscle is very, very slow. Losing muscle can certainly be faster, but you know, it's not that crazy easy to lose a ton of muscle or an amount of muscle that would actually contribute to strength loss. You know, how, how much muscle do you need to actually gain for that to aid you in strength gains? Quite a lot. You need to gain quite a lot of muscle for that to actually aid you in strength gains. That's why if you're doing high reps sort of pump work, which can absolutely build you muscle, it will translate to strength gains so, so poorly because neurological adaptations and how much they are aiding your strength gains or just monumentally more meaningful than the muscle gains that you make. That's why it's so incredibly hard to improve your powerlifting total, for example, if you're not doing work in the gym that is specific to that. If you're doing high rep pump work, which can absolutely build you muscle, I mean, man, you will have to wait a long, long, long time before that contributes anything towards your low rep work. So if your shoulder exercises are stagnating, but otherwise everything else is going well, honestly, I would not be very inclined to assume that it's just those couple of grams of muscle fibers that you may have lost from your delts that are now preventing you from making strength gains. I would surmise that it probably has to do more with just energy and your acute ability to produce force. Things can influence this rather acutely. If you want, just try it out for yourself. Get yourself a dynamometer and test your grip strength and then test it when you wake up in the morning after a shitty night of sleep. I mean, you will feel like you could not grab anything super hard if your life depended on it. Even if you're losing muscle, I mean, it's not going to happen like from one day to the next. Whereas these stagnations in strength and just maintenance of strength as opposed to improving of that strength can happen sort of like from one day to the next. It's like, okay, last week I was progressing on the shoulder press. Now I don't. Oh my God, now nothing is progressing. I mean, that's how it usually happens. If it's that acute... Yeah, I'm sorry. It's most likely not your muscle fibers melting off of your body, but it's something that is actually happening much more acutely, such as you, you just lacking energy or for whatever reason, you're just not able to produce as much force. And then, of course, you need to take into account other things as well. For example, what is your rate of weight loss? If you're losing weight super, super fast, you went on some rapid fat loss protocol and you're losing, I don't know, like a percent and a half per week, whereas you were reasonably lean to begin with, and then everything else is just stagnating, no lift is improving. Is it conceivable that that is, at least in part, due to muscle loss? Yeah, I guess that's possible. But here's the thing, and here's what actually happens in the real world in practice much, much more often, is by the time you had pushed a fat loss phase so hard that your recoverability just really starts suffering and it is actually hurting your performance, you're not going to be maintaining your strength. You're going to be losing strength and you're going to be losing reps from your lifts. It's not that everything is just standing still and you're very nicely maintaining. That just doesn't really happen. When I was doing my photo shoot diet, I pushed that fat loss phase way, way too hard. And by the end of it, I want to say that I most probably have lost at least a kilo of muscle, but I think more so like one and a half, two, easily. By the end of it, man, I was not maintaining my strength. You know how much I lost from like this chest press machine where I was always pretty strong. I went from like 110 kilos for 10 to like 85 kilos for 10. This sort of strength loss is what I saw on a lot of lifts. Even lifts that I began during the diet were just not improving after like a week or two. Yeah, that is dieting way, way too hard to the point where it's basically impossible to gain any strength. And it's... For me, at least, it was even impossible to maintain my strength. And by the way, if you're losing some strength during the cut, is that like the litmus test? Like if that happens, then you must be losing muscle? No, because once again, you need to take into account 
what has been happening beforehand when you were gaining or when you were hovering around maintenance. If you really needed to move heaven and earth to improve your lift at all, I mean, that means that you're basically stretching the surface of what your potential is on those lifts or your programming might suck. That is another option, certainly. But let's say your programming is pretty decent. It was incredibly difficult to improve your lifts at all. If now you're losing a rep or two, does that mean that now you're losing muscle? It's just like, no. You took something that was super, super hard, even when everything was perfect. Now you made things not perfect at all. In fact, you made them quite suboptimal. Now it's even worse. Now it's even more difficult to improve it. And yeah, eventually it might even be very difficult to even maintain it. And then what about a scenario? So let's say you're not losing weight way too fast. So let's say it's an intermediate guy. Still, we are expecting him to gain a fair amount of strength and is losing, I don't know, like 0.7% of his body weight per week, which is like perfect given his training gauge, body fat percentage, all of that. That's what he should be aiming at and is maintaining all his lifts, even though those lifts are relatively new. He introduced them like, I don't know, a month or two ago, and they are just not improving. Everything is maintaining. Is that an indication that he might be losing muscle? Yeah, that would be an indication that he is losing muscle. But here's the thing. That just does not happen. <laughs> that does not happen at all, ever. The thing is that when you still have a lot of potential to improve your strength on certain lifts, then you will, even if you're cutting. In fact, you would need to push a fat loss phase incredibly, incredibly hard for your training to not result in strength gains. So we are sort of addressing a non-existing issue if we are talking about a scenario like this. And then we can even talk about things such as if your weight loss and fat loss is very, very significant, it can actually change your body structure and it can actually change your range of motion on certain exercises. That does happen. So far, let's say you only need it to squat this deep. I'm just you know, indicating with my hand gestures, the magnitudes, this deep to reach that depth because the fat that was on your hamstrings and on your butt, that provided some extra bit of padding. So it only needed to be this deep. Now you will need to increase the range of motion at your knee joint or, or at your hip joint to reach that same level of depth. So now you need to squat this deep. Your muscles actually need to work harder. If then you're maintaining your strength, is that because you're losing muscle? No, it's probably just because of range of motion. Similar things can happen on the bench press, for example. I've heard some other suggestions from some people, such as you could use exercises like dips and chin-ups where your body weight has a major contribution to how heavy the load is that you need to lift as indicators of whether you're losing muscle or not. So for example, if on a chin-up you're just maintaining your strength, even though you had lost a lot of weight, so you're able to do the same number of reps with a bodyweight chin-up, then that means that you actually got weaker, therefore you lost muscle. But you know, like I could say that this is a better indication and I like this better, but at the same time, is getting weaker always an indication of muscle loss? Well, once again, you need to take into account the context. How advanced were you at that exercise? How difficult was it to progress that even while you were bulking or when you were well-fed? What about the rest of your program? Do other pulling exercises also suffer? A lot of other things like this. So you need to contextualize this thing. And the thing is, does the individual who made the statement that you're losing muscle if you're just maintaining your strength, does he know this? Of course he does. In fact, I even left a comment under that post and basically said all of this very, very briefly. And I'm not sure if my comment got deleted. Maybe it was actually deleted. So yeah, I was not a fan of this sort of clickbaity post and title and really none of it. I've seen this multiple times. And to be honest, it's just fear mongering and, and kind of bullshitty. So that's always a bit sad to see. But Hopefully everything that I said here provided uh, the context that you needed so that you can make more or better informed decisions about your training and not these unfounded fear-based decisions. So yeah, folks, that's what I wanted to say in this video. Uh, please let me know what you thought. If you have questions, also that. If you like the video, please drop a like and subscribe for more content like this. If you'd like to work together with me, then links in the video description for more info on that. And if you'd like to check out my book, also the link is in the video description for that. And you can check that out. It's about how to design awesome training splits and training routines for yourself, which I hope you'll like if you go ahead and check it out. So anyways, that's all I wanted to say in this video. See you in the next one. Ciao, ciao. Yanis out.